This is a weird video topic, I get that, but I think it's a very interesting story to tell, which is why we're going to be telling it here today. Who knew? Stuff that I think is cool to talk about is going to be discussed about on the YouTube channel. That is mind-boggling, isn't it? I will give some credit where credit is due, though, because I do believe this was a discussion that was had in the comment section of our recent video talking about the Phillips doing their thing in the Czech Republic. We spoke a few weeks ago. Was it a week ago? No, it wasn't even a week ago. It wasn't even half a week ago. My gosh, it was a few days ago. Talking about Philip Zadina, Philip Peronik, these guys doing their thing in the Czech Republic and how they are doing extraordinarily well. And I think in the comment section is where I got the overall foundation for this topic here today, which is how the Arizona Coyotes have really helped out the Detroit Red Wings. Now, when you think about the Arizona Coyotes, you kind of think about all the really just weird and controversial stuff that's gone on with this team over the past calendar year. From illegal testing of prospects to John Chayka just up and away leaving, terminating his own contract, to obviously the Mitch Miller pick, the first pick they had in the 2020 draft. All this weird stuff that's gone on with Arizona. Plus, the other controversy that was going around about them not paying their building people, like the people who host the building they play in. It was something weird like that. It was a while ago, I forgot, but we did cover that in the video as well. But the Arizona Coyotes are, in my opinion, one of the teams that have absolutely just helped out this Red Wings team in terms of getting themselves back on track. Because if you take a look at where exactly the Detroit Red Wings are, they're in the territory where the best year of the players that are on the team right now are going to be later rather than now, but the Arizona Coyotes have a lot to do with that. And this story starts all the way back in 2016, because in the 2015-2016 NHL season, the Red Wings were witnessing the last year of a man named Pavel Datsuk. I don't know if you've heard of this guy. He was just some plug that was playing on the Red Wings for a few years. Some people might know who he is, but Pavel Datsuk was indeed a Detroit Red Wings player who was on the payroll for an extended amount of of time. After 2015-16, he was on the payroll for 2016-17 for just that one year with an AAV of $7.5 million. And because the Red Wings were in a position where back after the 2016 playoffs where they lost in the first round to the Lightning, they still wanted to remain competitive. And they didn't want to say goodbye to the playoff hopes of Cronwall and Zetterberg and all those guys just yet. But Pavel Datsuk was a guy whom a lot of people already kind of knew he was going to leave. It was already very much in the public eye the idea that Pavel Datsuk was just going to up and away go back to the KHL because he wanted to play there to end off his career. And that's actually a funny story because I was making YouTube videos back in 2016. I will say that. Just on a side little tangent here, there is a YouTube video on this channel talking about the Detroit Red Wings elimination from that 2016 NHL playoff series against the Tampa Bay Lightning. And that was grade 10 Geo over there. This was before we actually popped off on YouTube. It was like two years before that actually went down. I was still making videos. It was just really inconsistent. And as a result, there wasn't really a big catalog of videos to choose from because I was just making them on and off as I pleased. Unlike now where I'm making videos every single day because, hey, it's my job. And secondly, I love doing this. But that video on the channel does indeed talk about Pavel Datsuk leaving. It talks about the playoff series. It talks about how I actually thought the Red Wings were going to beat the Lightning in 2016's first round, but that they did they lost in five games, but afterwards the Red Wings made a trade to send Pavel Datsuk off to, you guessed it, the Coyotes. And this was an interesting trade for sure because what the Detroit Red Wings did was they sent Pavel Datsuk along with their own first round pick of that year, 16th overall, to Arizona in exchange for Joe Vitale and a first and a second. Now, let's talk firstly about Pavel Datsuk because the contract is indeed something that the Red Wings wanted to get rid of. No questions asked. It was $7.5 million. They didn't want to have that on their cap hit. With the money freed up after Pavel Datsuk's contract was off of the team, the Red Wings went out there and they made a few signings. First off, they signed Franz Nielsen, a six-year, $31.5 million contract. Yeah, we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> Thomas Vanek was signed to a one-year $2.6 million contract, and then they also made a few other trades later throughout the year. Thomas Yurko was traded away. Brendan Smith was traded away. Steve Ott and Vanek were all traded away. That was kind of the just shift in the direction, I guess, of the Red Wings in 2017's trade deadline period. But before that, they were in a position where they did kind of want to get themselves a little bit more of the juice, I would say, for playoff action between Zetterberg and Cronwall and all that. But 
This trade back over to the Pavel Datsuk Arizona Coyotes thing ended up seeing two picks getting back on to the Red Wings side. 53rd overall was the Arizona Coyotes' own second round pick, but they also acquired the 20th overall pick, which initially belonged to the New York Rangers. The Arizona Coyotes acquired this pick in the Chris Summers, Anthony Duclair trade, and then they traded it over to Detroit in order to get themselves that first round pick for Jacob Chitrin. Now, Chitrin. He's a good guy. I was a guy who was a very big fan of Jacob Chitrin back when he was in his draft year. I remember Chitrin was a guy whom a lot of people thought could have been like a top five pick at the very beginning of the draft year in like September of 2015, but he slid down the draft rankings, eventually went over 16th overall, eventually made the NHL year one, and now he is a pretty solid young up-and-coming defenseman. But the two picks that the Red Wings got in that trade ended up becoming Philip Peronik at 53rd overall and Dennis Chalowski at 20th overall. Two guys who are very much a part of the Red Wings roster today. One of them and Chalowski, a lot of people are saying, you know, there's a little bit of a question mark whether or not he's going to fulfill his potential or not, because he does have potential, he does have room to improve. It's just, we don't know if that is actually going to be drawn out of him. But for Philip Peronik, my gosh, this guy has been an underrated point producer for the Detroit Red Wings blue line. And that's odd to say, because the Red Wings were one of the worst teams we have seen ever in a long, long time. So for Hronik himself, we spoke about this in the previous Philip Philip Czech Republic video too, but he's been absolutely amazing. If we take a look at the numbers over here, Philip Hronik was able to get himself a whopping 31 points in 65 games. That's actually better than what Jacob Chitrin did this most previous season with the Coyotes, and Chitrin played for a much better team on paper. So you can see what you want about the one-to-one -one comparison there, but obviously Chalowski, a guy who got eight points in 36 games last year, definitely there is some room to improve for Chalowski, but at the end of the day, just taking a look at this trade over here on paper, even ignoring Joe Fatale, who did have to retire because of concussions, which is definitely unfortunate to see, but the Red Wings did have him under their system. Chalowski and Hronik for Datsuk, who is off the payroll, and Jacob Chitrin. My gosh, that's a great trade for Detroit. And furthermore, we still have to thank the Arizona Coyotes for one more thing that happened two years later, because I think when it comes to the Philip Philip thing with the Czech Republic and Hronik and Zadina doing well, Zadina is that other guy. And there is a pretty nice story when it comes to the Arizona Coyotes and Philip Zadina too, and I think you're kind of filling in the blanks as I'm talking about this. Yes, we have to thank the Arizona Coyotes for passing on Philip Zadina at the 2018 NHL Entry Draft. At the 2018 draft, Zadina was seen by many as the third best player in the draft, if not just a very close fourth. There was a whole bunch of speculation that it was Darlene, Svechnikov, and then whoever you want, but most people said Zadina. Even around back in December of 2017, there was an argument to be made as to whether or not Zadina could go second overall. This was off of the coattails of a very good World Juniors performance that I remember watching very so dearly, because Zadina was just Potten goals left and right, the guy was an absolute superstar on the international ice, and because of that, there was so much hype around Zadina. But when the draft ended up coming, we saw word that the Montreal Canadiens were in the market for a center, and that is not what Zadina was. They were at third overall, and they eventually selected Kotkin Yemi. Brady Kachuk went fourth because, hey, Ottawa wanted an NHL-ready, nice, powerful forward at their hands, which is what they got, and then the Arizona Coyotes pick got leaked a little bit before the pick was actually made. I wasn't one who actually thought that Arizona was going to go for a center at this spot, at fifth overall, because the talent that was available there, Philip Zadina, Quinn Hughes, Adam Bogfist, these guys were, in my opinion, higher-ranked prospects than Barrett Hayden, but alas, they ended up going that route. They went with the center, who in retrospect, is not as good as Philip Zadina has been at the NHL level today, but of course, you know, going into the long-term future, I was a big believer in Barrett Hayton back then. I was just like, no, not fifth overall good. He's a guy who got four points in 20 games played this most recent season with the Arizona Coyotes. Philip Zadina, at his own ranking, got himself 15 and 28, and now he is over a point per game in the Czech Republic. He is a goal a game in the Czech Republic. Barrett Hayden is at one point in three games played with the Ilves hockey team in the Liga. So, you know, I guess just from a short-term perspective, you could definitely say that Philip Zadina might have been the better pick at that spot. But of course, this is what Philip Zadina said himself, man. The other teams, three to four to five, they're going to regret passing 
passing on him because he's going to fill their nets with pucks over the next few years. So for Arizona, thank you guys. As a guy who is indeed a somewhat Red Wings fan, I do thank the Arizona Coyotes first off because of that trade, which eventually ended up being just Chitrin, who is a good player for Hronik, who is arguably better, and Chalowski, as well as for passing on Philip Sedina at the 2018 NHL entry draft. Talk to me in the comments what you think about this weird video idea. I know it's very weird, but bear with me. It was fun to talk about. Hope you enjoyed this video. Like, troll us, nine, nine. And bye.